Where are all my friends? Miles, my new friend. What's up, dude? What is going <laughs> on? I am here from the studio, so I'm feeling good. Good. Thank yeah, you dude. for having me. Thank you for making the time. Of course. I, uh, I have kind of like a couple rules with artists where the podcast goes back and forth. It's industry and artists, but there are certain friends and labels and associations where if I see a project in that ecosystem, I'm like, say less. I absolutely need to. So shout out to the Electra fam. Shout but out to the Electra fam. We love the Electra fam over here. Much love, but more so to yourself because the project is sick and you earned that. And that's not a label. It's really cool. And it's turned out just every possible way that I've wanted it to over this last couple months that we've really been putting the finishing touches on it. So it's exciting. Yeah. I'm excited to dive into this one because I think you have a very unique sound and I think that that has to come from a place of intention and also artist growth. So I'm curious to hear your, your backstory. But before we get deep, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, just the quick explanation of who you are and what you do. My name is Miles. Yep. I am from St. Louis, Missouri. Yep. I've been making music since I was 15 years old, and I'm finally now signed into a record deal making music full time as my one and only career. Let's fucking yeah. go. That has to be the craziest milestone as an artist to like your day you wake up your job is make music yep that right there is the dream like that is so much further than anyone ever gets dude it's i mean it's everything that i ever wished and hoped for i literally just came from a studio session writing a song about it yesterday (laughs) so yeah it's that's i'm feeling very reflective right now yeah it's just it's so awesome yeah that's so fucking cool that's so cool so take me back to the st louis days so you start music 15 so i started singing i mean since i remember that i could yeah uh like i just always loved singing elementary school like when we had music class it was you know everybody was too too scared to like sing and everything i was belting (laughs) like from the back of the class belting that shit when we had musicals where it was the one where like everybody had to do it Uh dude i wanted that solo every time i don't care about (laughs) the participation like give it to me yeah like let's do this like i want that shit like i loved singing was that in your family like did your parents perform i mean not really my dad you know we when we get to karaoke and my dad would bust out some frank sinatra it was actually crazy i was like damn (laughs) you can actually sing like this like so i don't know it was maybe a little something from there uh you know he listened to every genre of music under the sun i got in the car one time and there was polka music playing oh wow uh so i I mean every genre so like that's kind of like where i get that you know eclecticness from yeah that's a perfect word for it yeah it is like he he was just always listening to the craziest shit yeah but yeah man so i was singing i loved it and then you know fast forward to middle school and i started freestyling a little bit as one does i had a computer so of course i ripped the version of logic and i was sorry uh apple you know how how often this comes up on the podcast the artist or the creator journey of like you find the thing and then you steal the program if you didn't steal the first program you're not even supposed to be here i really don't think so because like that's when that's when two hundred dollars for a doll is like everything i can't do that and you know you you put up with the random crashes and whatnot (laughs) oh my god i forgot dude you have like your fucking magnum opus project you're so excited Mm -hmm. and then it's like system error and you're just like just break the whole project yeah well yeah so like i guess before that i uh i had garage band and i was in middle school this was seventh grade and I recorded myself yeah. singing all the classic Christmas songs. Oh. And then put it together. Okay. Took a picture of myself in a in a, in a sweater in Stop front of the it. tree for the album cover. <laughs> put it into a little editing app. Put Merry Christmas, Miles. And I uh, burned CDs and handed them out. I think like a, I burned 100 of them. I was up to like 5 a.m. like the day before we all left for like Christmas break. And I just handed them out in uh, seventh grade. Dude, that, so that was that was my first ever recorded. That's <laughs> hilarious. Project. I thought you were going to go down a different path with that, but I bet you the timing, it would work better now. And in like if somebody was in school right now, this would be such a great hustle, but like seasonal because like uh, uh, like uh, DSPs and like Spotify, mm-hmm. Apple Music, like mm-hmm. You get paid on the play. So if you were to just tune core a bunch of Christmas covers, 
as a kid, you'd probably get playlists just off of that. <laughs> That's kind of a hustle. I thought you were about to go down that, and I was like, "Fucking wizard!" No, that, that was just was out free. of passion. That, that was one was for, for free because I wanted to. <laughs> that one, that one was fun. But yeah, man. And then so I had my logic. I was recording. You know, I was recording just everything because I was freestyling. I was like, "Damn, what if? What if I like?" stopped for a second and actually like thought about what I was going to say. Like, cause then I started getting good at freestyling. I mean, I was freestyling every day. Yeah. Like I had this like group of friends and I was like smoking weed after school and yeah. just in the car in for hours at a time. Yeah. What were and, your inspirations? Like what was the kind of stuff that you'd listen to or who'd you look up to then? Dude, Lil Wayne was a huge one. Yeah. Probably one of my biggest inspirations, I think, as far as like, cause when I started, I wanted to be a rapper yeah. and that man, every single sentence was like, you could he fit three punchlines in a sentence. And you're like, how are you, how are you getting all of these bars into like just one, one line? Yeah. He and was, so he was an important piece. He was a wordsmith yeah, dude. Yeah. And like then is. finding out that, yeah, sorry. Is yeah. what am I saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he just like, the way, like when I found out that he was going in there and just freestyling and all, like he wasn't writing any of this down. Like yeah. that's the craziest shit ever. Like that is the, that is the pinnacle right. of freestyling ability yeah. to do the bars that Wayne was doing. So he was setting that bar for you. 100%. And you were just day in, day out freestyling. Dude, I was homies. getting bars off in middle <laughs> school. Like that was my, that was my vibe. I was uh, throwing out random shit on SoundCloud. Yeah, uh, just like. Mixed by yours truly. Looking back, it didn't sound fantastic, but yeah, like, you had the grit, you had the drive to put it out. That's yeah. so important. It was so much fun, man. Cause like it was just cool. And like, you know, one song got like a thousand plays, and I was like, oh, this is this is insane. Yes. But so I'm doing this in uh, you know, actually my high school uh track coach. Yeah. He I, you know, I told him I was doing music and all that. And he was like, yo, I know this guy who owns a studio in this like shady part of St. Louis. <laughs> You're like a high school traffic coach is sending you down into the house. Dude, it was, it was amazing. Cause like, I didn't know like where <laughs> to go for plug. this. That's the plug. He was the plug, bro. That's His name was Jafari. Great. His name was Jafari. Go. So he <laughs> takes me, he takes me to this studio. He takes you. Yeah. Oh he takes me God. to the studio. He has a like a bottle of like nice uh nice whiskey. No. And gives this dude the bottle of whiskey to record me for my first session ever. Oh. So my it was God. like because it was his homie and yep. he was like, and he was kind of doing this as a friend. And then yeah. he was like, but so yeah, my first session ever. It was free. Dude, I, like, I think back to people like that. Like yeah. shout out to those people. No, like, huge, huge but, shout out to Jafari right now. Right. Like, but like, Dude. think about the people that see it in you before mm -hmm. you see it. Like, obviously mm -hmm. you were going in on it, but like mm -hmm. in no world did he have to do that for you. At all. What did you know? he saw something in you where he's like, I'm going to go out of my way for this yeah. fucking student. Like, yeah. those are the people that fucking make the world happen. It really is, man. Because, you know, I mean, who who knows what would have happened if that wouldn't have happened? You know, like, I mean, I feel like I was always destined to do this shit. So yeah, it would have happened in some, some other way. You know, but like, that was just like, that was a serious moment for me because like once I got in that studio and I recorded with somebody like, I mean, he, he was, and it just so happened that he was like one of the best mixing engineers in all of. So he actually same. was legit. Like it no, wasn't like, like you just went to some whack place. No, like he bro, fucking. Like he like, I'm pretty sure he recorded like Mike Studd or some shit like back in the day. Yeah. Like he, he's serious. So yeah. it just so happened that he was like the best in the business for oh where I was. God. And so we recorded my first song and I'm recording in there. And everything just sounds so crazy because it's not me, yeah. you know, messing around on a crack version of Logic that I don't yeah, know what I'm yeah. doing. It's like Into a like full maybe thing. a blue snowball mic, like it's like. Oh, real. bro, I was yeah, I was rocking the Blue Spark Digital, the there USB. Bro. Yeah. Come on, we ain't yeah, had so, no no focus right, no nothing. Like, yeah, yeah. It was so like it was just crazy. I was like, this is it. You got like, a taste of what it was supposed to be. Yeah. You saw it. I yeah. was like, this is what I want to do yeah. forever. Oh my, that moment. That was the moment, That's man. The I mean, moment. that was the moment. And then I had another one after that. I recorded a song with him. It was a, a remix of Travis Scott's Maria, I'm Drunk. Okay. And I'm a senior in high school at this point, And it like goes viral. Oh my God. It yes, happens. It happens. So I put it on, I put it on SoundCloud and this was in like the promoting sounds era. Oh. So promoting sounds picks it up. It's going, you know, crazy. Like in like 
around my high schools, like all the high schools in the area, like yeah. start knowing this song. And then I would like play it when I would go on like trips to other places. I'm going to like football camps and oh, shit. Oh, okay. So you're playing time. sports. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sports. Yeah. We'll get there. And so then it's just like spreading from, I'll get like everybody together in a place and I'll play it for them. And then they'll go back to their little contagion vibes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the map of contagion. That's how it was. Spreading. Were you like a fucking hero in school? Like did people Dude, know? I yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to toot my own horn, but, but yeah, like, I was there was like, a little I performed moment. like the pep rally type shit. Oh, like, cool. yeah, it was, it was cool. Um, but yeah, no. So that happened. Promoting sounds picks it up, and then at the time, my managers um, were rooming with this vlogger. Yeah, he puts it in his vlog, and so it's just getting f from every avenue. Wow. And you know, I'm in high school. I'm like, holy shit, this is like. I, I think I can really do this. Like that was the moment where I was like, oh, yeah. I can really do this. And I played a show, yeah. a live show for the first time, put it together, like made the flyer and everything on like a drawing pad. Uh -huh. And it just was, I was like, yeah, oh, that, that was the shit. second moment where I was like, okay, there's the recording and making the music. And now here's the performing it. Yeah. Like this is, this is what I want to do. Dude, that's nuts that you got a taste of that that early though. Yeah. I'm because people, so lucky. Like, like a lot of artists will have that they'll have the first experience they'll mm -hmm. get that proper recording mm -hmm. session and they'll go in and they'll know but to get that little viral moment that early probably gave you so much gas to keep going oh dude like just nobody could tell me anything and there was without a doubt in my mind that this was gonna happen yeah and i mean you know to a point it was just blind faith in yeah. myself that yeah. like i knew that I was gonna figure it out, yep. and I, here we are, we figured Dude. it out, man. <laughs> but that's so important. I yeah. think that that's like, that's a lesson, and I like to differentiate that of like, that's not necessarily being like a cocky asshole. That's just like, you have to believe in yourself before oh, anyone else man. sees it. You have to have that vision, yeah. because there is that gap before reality catches up and the world's like, oh shit, no, he's got this. Mm -hmm. So then I'm also curious though. So you're in St. Louis, mm -hmm. you're having that success. You're kind of having this moment off of a cover, mm -hmm. but that's very hip hop. You're like mm -hmm. freestyling. It's a lot of rap. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily what your project is now. And you live in LA, not St. Louis. Did you have conversations? Like, were you thinking you were going to go to college? Were your parents supportive? Like, what did that look like? Cause now you have this little bit of a success. You have taste, you have a taste of it. What happens next? So at the time, I was getting recruited for football. I had good grades. Yeah. Uh, I was getting my shit done. Yeah. And at the same time, I was kind of a monster at football. Really? Um, I was 3'10", 6'4", uh, three, uh, 310 pounds. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. What? Yeah, 310 pounds and 6'4". And <laughs> God. Yeah, no, I was, I was a monster. So you straight, like, could have done damage if you would, like... Yeah, that, I mean, the... like, dude, if I would have put... Because, you know, it was getting to the point where people were doing outside work to get better at football. Yeah. And I just didn't care about it like that. Yeah. Because the second I started doing music, I was like, everything just started like fading to the background. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is like, yeah. this is the main thing. There is no other thing than this. And there will never be any other thing than this. Yeah. You know, so I get recruited. Uh, I end up going to Dartmouth. No and, shit. Yeah. Dartmouth <laughs> in New Hampshire for Fuck. about four months because they were on the quarter system. <laughs> yeah. So I went the first quarter. It was, I'll be honest, it was pretty shitty really? because I, uh, right before, so I, go, I went for football. I fucked up my ankle before I left. And so I was the team manager, which means team bitch. Fuck. And you're, I was in a scissor lift, like 25 feet in the air by myself with a camera every day filming practice. And then we would go to meetings to watch the film that I had filmed the day prior. I was not really fucking with uh, that was not with everything, it. with the well, situation. And especially too, it's not like that area is like any type of encouraging for music. Like you're, you're taking a step away from home where you probably had a network where you started to get it going. Yeah. And then you're in college, not yeah. playing football. Yep. That probably sucked. It sucked pretty hard. Like I was, I was not in a great, did, how did space. you how did you get through that like did you know it'd be temporary or like how uh, long? like four months isn't long but in that i bet you it felt like an eternity like, yeah what did it, you do it, to get out of that? it felt like forever man honestly it was probably like half self-sabotage half that like i just like it was just not a good period of time in my life like i i was 
you know, it was cold. It's in the middle of the woods. There's nothing to do. I'm like in this like sterile ass dorm. And like this whole time I'm like trying to be creative and like with the weight of like football, which is a full ass job in high And then, you know, showing up five minutes late to being 15 minutes early and then having to go in the next morning at 530 for like punishment conditioning it was just i was like yo <laughs> it is not that serious football makes it seem like you know you're gonna pull up three minutes late to a meeting and <laughs> then right. your world's gonna fall apart yeah and you you like <laughs> it was maybe maybe you could have been brainwashed to that if you hadn't had enough of a taste of music but like you just knew too much where you're like this yeah. is not it yeah okay, and so, so were your so, parents supportive of you dropping out or like how did that look what, what happened uh not so much <laughs> uh definitely like my mom, you know, my mom really wanted me to go. My, they, my, both my parents, they really wanted me to go to college. And especially it's an Ivy League school. They're like, yo, you have to take this opportunity. You can do yeah. anything in the world. And I'm like, yo, I don't really want to do anything in the world. Like, I know what I want to do. I don't really want to go. I was talking about gap year. They they weren't really here and all that. Fuck, okay. Because, you know, if I took a gap year, they were like, you're not going to go back. And, like, right. you know, in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, but, yeah, it was a uh, second term. I got back and I just didn't go to class. I uh, I was snowboarding uh, every day, so they had their own mountain, uh, <laughs> the Dartmouth Skiway, <laughs> and so I would they would pick you up in front of the library. There was a bus that t- that picked you up like every day if you wanted to go, and I just went snowboarding every day of the second term, and so I, I did not show up to one class, yeah. I, not yeah, not one, not even like no orientation, no nothing. And so then my counselor called me and she was like, "Hey, like your grades are." and you have your attendance like you haven't really been yeah, here you've been on the and so and you get right. you get a personal term everybody gets one personal term for, per their time at dartmouth and if you take that it wipes the, she's like oh it wipes the slate clean basically it's like as if you weren't even here this semester and then you know you start fresh next semester so i'm like oh well this is this sounds very attractive because i one of those please <laughs> yeah, exactly so i was like bet <laughs> once you did the paperwork you had to like dip the campus because you couldn't like be like in the housing so i was like well i'm not gonna do the pay like i I need to like figure out what i'm gonna do because so i told my parents i'm like yeah this is the personal term i explained it how she explained it to me i dipped to la Uh for like a month and a half for the Uh end of the like term and this was like to be like a reset to get me back ready to go back to college after being in Mm -hmm. la for a month and a half yeah uh so like yeah the 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 idea was there, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So anyways, then it gets to the end of the personal term and I'm like signing the papers, like sending them over. And she's like, Hey, by the way, like, did you know that due to your grades, you would be avoiding an academic suspension. So you won't be able to return for three terms and low key. Well, first I was scared shitless. Cause I was like, Holy shit, Holy shit. Like I'm gonna have to tell my parents that I can't go back to Dartmouth for a year. Yeah. And then second, I was like, thank God god yeah because i was so done man i was yeah. so done i really tried it. i gave it the college try i yeah. was like just Quite try it literally. for a year you're gonna like and then at the end of the year but it we didn't even make it half a year no it was it just wasn't happening so yeah it, it just kind of happened like that and i was actually on a trip to jamaica to celebrate that i got like two b's the first term with my dad <laughs> and my mom gets the letter in the Stop mail it. so i was gonna tell him, i was gonna tell him i promise i was after i got back from the father-son trip to jamaica i felt like Fuck. you know let's just have that yeah like nice moment yeah, in our heads before we before we do the whole hey yeah by I, the way i don't think i'll be going back and so like yeah me and my dad were talking about it you know i talked to my mom they were, you know, it was tough. It's, it's parents that want you to be successful and, you know, that want you to be secure, I think yeah. is the main word for that. But it just, you know, I told him, I was like, honestly, I don't want to, I don't want to go back. Like, yeah. This is a blessing in disguise. Like, you know, I'm kind of forced to drop out at this point or because my mom wanted to fight it, you know, send letters and like have me write stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to write anything because I don't believe, I would not believe a single word I'm saying trying to get back into the school I don't want to go to. Yeah. Well, talk to me about LA though. So you, yeah. you took that break and you came to LA. Oh yeah. Cause at that time my managers were out here moving and shaking, you know, yeah. I'm across the fucking country yeah. just, and they're out here making moves. I'm like, I need to be there. Yeah. So I, I was, you know, I was coming out here. We were doing, we we're just doing so much. Cause I feel like in, in trips to LA. Yeah. It's so different than it like living so different. here because you know you got well you know it for me it's probably the that was my 
four, fourth, fifth time out here because me and my manager, we were taking, uh, we were driving to Kansas City, Missouri, and taking hundred dollar round trip Spirit flights oh, to LA. Yeah, and then we fly back to Kansas City, drive back to Missouri. Oh so gosh. yeah, it was it was awesome. You know, I spent the month and a half. I was just doing so many things. I was linking with so many cool people. I was seeing, you know, everything. We were going around with this vlogger, like just. Like, you know, meeting everybody in the industry, networking, going out, just doing. I was like, yo, this, this. Dude, to have a, like, to compare that, the instant juxtaposition of, like, bullshit Dartmouth, everything you've ever wanted, (laughs) all of the things you're like. Literally. Literally. I was like, coming. it is in the middle of the woods. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not kidding. Their whole slogan is, like, into the woods. Like, that was, like. The Dartmouth. I don't know. I don't even know what the yeah. mascot was. I don't even think we had a mascot. I think it was just. It was a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, bro. Probably. Fuck. Yeah, man. But uh, LA so, was so dope. Yeah. So you you would come out here and you would really like you had been working like you weren't yeah. just fucking off. Like when you nah. were here, you were like meeting all the people doing the yeah. thing. I was grinding. Yeah. yeah. So you have the conversation with your parents. Mm-hmm. Do you pretty much instantly come back to LA then? So. That? Have the conversation and we're kind of, you know, I'm telling them, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. They're like, well, how are you going to do this? And I was right. like, well, I don't know, yeah. but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> like, yeah. it, I know that it's going to work. And yeah. I know that like what it's just like save up some money, leave. Yeah. And then it'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom wanted to do a little planning with me. Uh, she wanted to, she's, she's a spreadsheet person it's and respect. a visual, like you yeah. know, in a like, five year plan uh-huh. type, which I think, you know, yeah. was good to have. Uh, I don't remember following it, you know, strictly, but we did that and that was cool. And then I was working actually at a cupcake shop. No shit. Yes, I was a front facing cupcake expert was actually my title. Wow. And I worked at Jilly's Cupcakes where it was a, uh, they won Cupcake Wars twice. So this is like, no, there's no little operation. <laughs> this isn't. Like this, this was the real deal cupcakes. <laughs> I'm telling you, these cupcakes were this big and I was eating. It's out here? Know, nah, it's in St. Louis. Oh, I was like, so what yeah, the I'm fuck back, have I I'm not back been? living with my parents. Our house actually caught on fire. Oh no. Uh, when I go back at the end, uh, they moved us. At, dude, it was honestly awesome. <laughs> Uh, they moved us into this like almost resort style like complex with a movie theater, a pool, hot tub, outdoor seating. And like we were living, that was like our little summer getaway in St. Louis. And the the cupcake place that I worked in was right down the street. So Okay, so you had like this weird accidental vacation in your own city type. Yep. And that whole time thing. I'm just stacking bread, working at a cupcake shop. And, you know, then... This vlogger that I was, you know, hanging out with, he uh, had an open spot in his new place. And I was like, I, I, yes. Yeah. He was like, dude, to come yeah. come out here. Live, yeah. live here. It's time. Because yeah. I was just going back and forth and back and forth. And every time it was good. And, you know, we were having fun in the vlogs. Like, it, it was just, it was a vibe. Yeah. And so... I was like, I gotta do this. This is it. This yeah. is like, this is the, this is the thing that yeah. was gonna happen. So made it happen that like apartment you're in LA, yeah i walked you we had a private roof with a spiral staircase in our apartment to a turfed out roof and i go up there for the first time and the hollywood signs like in the distance i'm like you're a fucking king i've ascended yeah yeah i like I, at that point i'm like floating on air i'm like holy <laughs> shit we, we fucking did it yeah oh, man fuck. and you know i'm just doing music out there fucking Sl- slang and drinks yeah, uh, at that yeah. time i wasn't actually 21 yet so i was the host oh. i was the host at this place called free play over uh by the coliseum okay yeah so i was doing that damn so you really weren't above like you'd pick up jobs whatever any, no, bro. anything oh my music going. we were scraping bro. i yeah. i remember eating uh those like one dollar freezer meals yes because you could buy 20 of them yeah and have food for like almost a month dude low-key i'll still fuck up those mac and cheeses those are good the craft mac and cheese the frozen no the frozen dollar mac and cheeses word like okay all right yeah those that's are fair. nice yeah. i'm a craft mac and cheese guy myself i mean don't get me wrong that's <laughs> nice but have you the frozen ones kind of hit in their own way they definitely i yeah. was not I did not mind it at all. Yeah, because you were here. You were doing your Dude, thing. Dude, it did not matter. I had no money, no extra money whatsoever. Like, yeah. you know, and my parents, 
they ended up helping me like a little bit. They were like, all right, well, let's count this as your gap year. So okay, we'll, that's cool. we'll help with your rent for the first year that you're, I was like, that's cool. So they're like, as much as they wanted the college life, like they yeah, were very they, supportive and like, they definitely yeah. came around, man. And then, you know, I started, you know, having a little bit of success. I started to like, you know, get, send some things back. There was proof in the pudding that like, Hey, steps are being made to yeah. go to where I was telling you that I knew I was going to go. Yeah. And you know, talk then, to me about those. Like what started clicking? Cause yeah. like also somewhere in this, you are kind of evolving your sound as well. 100%. But just as much as your music, I'm interested, like the first steps of it clicking and it working. What did yeah. you figure out? Absolutely. Like, so like I said, I started in St. Louis and I wanted to be a rapper so bad. My name was Mix Millennial. Oh. I got the tattoo to prove it. That was that's the logo that I made for yeah, Mix yeah. Millennial. Yeah, it's there. Uh, and I feel like that was a lot of, you know, what I had listened to and the environment that I was in. Yeah. And so I came out to LA mm. and I went all the way pop. No shit. Like bubblegum pop, really? no substance, just straight like just top 40, This is whatever. down the middle top 40 let's make a hit song that goes viral pop music wow and so then you know and then i think the next kind of year ish period yeah. was just finding that balance where yeah. that middle ground lies and yeah. you know what you know ultimately i kind of really came into that sound still today which is that you know that balance between the poppiness the melodies because i love to sing you know the harmonies but that you know get a little witty and a little clever with the with the yeah. lyrics and the in the in the verses yeah. you know throw throw a couple bars in if need be if like need i can be. I, I can still do that like we can it's, do that <laughs> it's in the pantry it exactly. can be a part you know, of the we gotta, recipe you gotta take it out dust it off a little <laughs> bit every now and again yeah. to let them know that we really doing it yeah, we can still respect Wayne when he needs to be respected. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So no. And then uh, like I said, I had this vlogger friend and he was putting he was like huge vlogger and he was putting my stuff in his vlog. So it was getting traction Brilliant. from there. Brilliant. I was getting fans from that. Yeah. Um, you know, my songs were just like they were just going like yeah. kind of organically, really. We really weren't like promoting anything. Yeah. It just like was all happening. Well, just super organically that's great and yeah. i mean i think i think youtube is more powerful than people realize like having that the vlogger friend or i uh i've seen a couple people a project that i really respect like mm -hmm. skateboard a circle of skate kids mm -hmm. in this erased project and mm -hmm. this kid ryan labrata was on the podcast and they'll put his songs in it and i think like every artist should think like that if like put music out with your friends, associate it with yeah. your friends. Like it's not some weird contrived thing, but yeah. I think that that probably worked just because it was real. It was it, just you and your did. friends. And like at that point too, like this is like before TikTok. Yeah. So like, and this is again, promoting sounds era. So, you know, my it's getting pushed on blogs yeah. and vlogs and shit. So it's like, yeah. that was like the big time where that was happening. So, you know, and it was, it was a taste. Yeah, it yeah. was a little taste, you know. I was on yeah. Distro Kid, like making my little, my little tiny check, uh, yeah. you know. At the end of the month, I was like, this but, well, is like, would you like crack like a grand? Like, would you like? Oh, quick break right here to let you know that support for where are all my friends is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. All right, so check it out. The Performance Package 4.0 has arrived, and it is a game changer. They sent me this package, and I was legitimately impressed. The entire presentation of it, everything that comes in it, it's just sick. It's such high quality. It's really, really good. And I didn't want to talk about it until I tried it. But the Lawnmower 4.0 is a trimmer with this rad ceramic blade. It reduces grooming accidents because of it and it is waterproof so you no longer need to shave on the floor of your bathroom you can just pop into the shower and get it done nice and clean we love that on top of that they send you a whole bunch of other rad stuff they send you the crop preserver ball deodorant and crop reviver toner they send you performance boxers and a travel bag to hold it all together and i can't forget the little weed whacker for your ear and nose hairs so good Altogether, it's legitimately a product that I really love. It changed the game for me, so you can change the game for yourself as well and level up your hygiene game. And again, to do so, go to manscaped.com, get free shipping and 20% off with the code WAAMF20. Again, 20% off, free shipping, manscaped.com. Use the code WAAMF20 to unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. All right, back to it. Not for a while. Okay. Yeah, okay. it was like, it was like, 
couple hundred few, bucks few to a, a little bit more than a few hundred bucks okay and i was like you know this is this is good but i mean fuck like that like that is so powerful it was like, awesome because yeah. i remember i remember my dad saying to me he was like it's a hobby until you get paid for it yeah that's some dad advice right there very dad advice yeah. i get it and i remember i got my first check from distro kid for 38 cents and I was like, <laughs> ain't a hobby no more. Another trip, <laughs> another trip to Jamaica, pops. Run I'm it. Me. I'm paying. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, man. Oh man, that's good. What about what about? I'm curious, like with the pop thing, how you were straight down the middle with the pop. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that was like you wanting success more than artist integrity, getting out here? Or were you genuinely interested in that? Or like, you think that was the circle of people you were around? Like what it, influenced that? Yeah, that was my pop side being suppressed for so long. Okay. I think because when, when I was in St. Louis, like if you, like I was in the car and if you were in the car with your homies and you were going to put on some like pop shit, yeah. like you were getting clowned. Yeah, like it is not. It's hitting. not hitting yeah, at all. Like yeah. they're like, I want to hear that hard trap shit. Yeah, like yeah. it, like nobody wanted to listen to pop music bro mm. and so it was just like that's just what we listened to yep. like the the majority of everyone was always trapped so it was like all right bet then i'm i guess i can't listen to my pop music that i love to right. listen to and so then when i came out here and uh. like everybody loved pop like, yeah. it was sick <laughs> it was sick like i could listen to like you know just the most poppiest shit i could listen yeah. to taylor swift and not Yo. give a second thought about <laughs> oh it you know what i'm God. saying and so so I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, yeah. you know, I haven't explored this side yeah. of, you know, my artistry. And so I really kind of, I think, dove head first into That's being cool. able to do that. So it was actually very genuine. Yeah, and, it yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. was. And I think, you know, at the same time, I'm like, well, I want to make music that everybody likes. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that was my, I want your six-year-old kid to your 90-year-old grandma to be able to listen to this shit. Yeah. And so I think that was like my main thing. And, you know, when I started to, I like, I didn't want to have a genre. I wanted to be genreless. Yeah. And I think- the fingers? Yeah, yeah. Just, just <laughs> somewhere in the ether. Just, yeah. Just, uh, I make music. Right, right, right. <laughs> and so I think like, you know, honing that in and dialing it to where it is now, like it kind of lends, you know, the freedom to still- mess with all the type of different genres but bring it into your own bag that's actually really cool i respect yeah. that a lot that like yeah. that was the progression that got you yeah. to this sound because i listened to it and it feels so natural now but i was like i was curious what really led to that and yeah, hearing it, that now it, i'm like i get it I completely it took a second get to get here but man i'm so blessed that it you know happened in the grand scheme of things so quickly so fast forward yeah. past the YouTube and the Vogue stuff yeah. and all that, you know, yeah. things were going the way they were going. It's whatever. And then quarantine hits. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So quarantine hits and I was like, okay, I did my two weeks of doing nothing because yeah. everybody got to do that. Right. That was your you, one time you where you Tiger could, King and everyone and in your life yeah. can do nothing. And yeah. then it got to the end of two weeks and I was like, what What do I do with yeah. my hands? Yeah, dude. So, Fuck. so I was like, if there's any time, now's the time to get started on TikTok. Yeah. And so I went back home because my oh. parents were just so worried about everything going on. Oh, and they were like, come, yeah. come back home. Your sister's going to come home. Just, just come home and stay here for a little bit. So I ended up staying there for two months. I started doing TikTok in my like childhood bedroom. And I made, I was like, what well, would be funny for TikTok? And I think this was like literally my second week of doing TikTok. Yeah. I was like a country trap song. Because in the vlogs, I had, like, done freestyles over country beats. Like, yeah, I was freestyling yeah. over everything. Is that Desperado? That's What in Tarnation. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So What in Tarnation happened from that. It was just a verse and a hook. And I put it on TikTok. And, like, overnight, it got, like, a million views. Oh, fuck, it worked? Yeah, like, Again. overnight. Dude, fucking shout out to the universe. There's Dude, I'm telling moments. you. I'm te it's just been... It's just been, I, I think of something and I want to do it. And I'm like, I'll figure it out. It'll, it'll work out in the end. And then the universe is just like, here, Dude. here you go. <laughs> That's fucking cool. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been really, really awesome. It's, it's been a, it's been a hell of a journey. And honestly, just 
been getting thrown bones yeah every single i like that you're aware of that though you're appreciative yeah. of it like you Absolutely, understand man. that it's like a, a little bit of luck but i also think that comes from it's, you i think that yeah. like you had to have put out a good product that cover had been good and that that had to have been an actual good bit you know 100 percent. and like i mean it's you know i realized that at the same time it's like so earned yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I put my time in, I'm putting my time in yeah. as we speak, like I'm, yeah. I'm putting the work in and that's, my dad just always taught me like manifestation, visualization, like see it, like speak yeah, it dude. into existence. And oh. like, he would just, he instilled that in me so young. And so I was just like, and it's, it, you know, it's funny. Cause when you get to the college thing and then I'm, I'm like doing the shit and he's like, go to college. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm right, like, no oh, dad, I'm, I'm manifesting right now. I'm, I'm doing the <laughs> stuff that you were telling me about. But no, man, and then, and then uh, the TikTok clicked. It it blew up. We we dropped the song two weeks later, and I mixed it all on my logic, like yeah. with my Apollo, my shirt. Wow! And we put it out like two two three weeks later, and it just went off on Spotify. Oh! And so it just shit. opened so many doors for me. Um, you know, I got to work with so many dope producers, which that was Desperados. Oh! My homie Danny Myich and Drew Folk. Drew that, Folk did that? Drew Folk. No shit. Yes, sir. Wizard Blood himself. Oh, my God. Yep. I respect him a lot. Dude, I respect the hell out of Drew Folk. Drew Folk is the GOAT. Yeah. Because we made Desperados. Then me and Danny went over and we made uh, When You're Sober right oh. after that. And those are my two songs. Because I'm like, what in Tarnation, Desperados, When You're Sober, I was like, I've made three now that are like in the perfect pocket for yeah. what i see myself doing okay. and you know the one tarnation obviously it was kind of more of a joke i did the right. southern drawl and everything yep. like, and then desperados was kind of like to try to like move out of that era without that's, going too far okay because like to still like okay you came for one tarnation here's something that's like kind of similar okay but like it's way cooler and more it's, in my pocket yeah and then you know then here's when you're sober right. that's the real shit that's what that's what i really want to do and so it was just like i think I think I'm on to something here. Like, yeah. this is the sound pocket. Yeah. And I found it and it was Ooh. awesome. It was just, it was so cool. It just, it just all kind of clicked. So then I have those two songs. Those are my only two songs. And Drew was like, hey, do you mind if I like send these to some AR people? And I was like, do I mind? Like, do you, do, uh, be, my, be my guest. Yeah. <laughs> so he ends up sending it to Johnny Minardi. No fucking way. It was his manager. Yeah. Also. Oh, my A&R at Electra. my God. And maybe you don't know one of my dearest friends. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So he so, sends it to Johnny. Yeah. And then we have a call. I think he sent it like, like Tuesday or something. Yeah. We had a call with them Thursday morning. And I'm on this call. I'm talking to a record label. And I'd had the meetings in the record labels where I'd gone in and they were like, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll keep in touch. Uh, you know, let us know like five, six, seven years down the line, like, you know, uh, you know keep sending us stuff and we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted. And yeah. Like, oh, I was like, Great. I was having these meetings. And I was like, oh, this is sick. They love me. Like, yeah. I'm going to get a deal. <laughs> and then at the end, it's like the fucking you know, most generic. So generic. And so, you know, I'd done so many of those. So I'm like, all right, cool. It's another one of these, whatever. Yeah. Like, I'll get on the Zoom. Yeah. And just off rip, like it was everybody in Electra. I was like, holy shit. They came like, in this proper. Is serious. Yeah. And they were like, they were like, we love you. Like, the songs are awesome. Like, love what you do. We're seeing you on social media. It's awesome. It's dope, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yo, they're super cool. And he was like, yo, would you be okay to us like working with you on Desperados? And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So this, this sounds to me like, am I signing? Yeah. my single Yo. to a to a record label yeah, i'm like yeah. okay i might get a single deal out of this right right. and so you know the call goes great it's awesome hang up and then my management calls me they're like yo we have to get a few things in order here like in the next three days because you're about to get a record deal oh and i'm like cool. holy shit yeah okay wait so uh, like this would you wanted this because certain oh, yeah. artists would be like I'm fucking independent forever, but you saw this and you're like these are the right people. This is gonna fucking elevate it. Let's go. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. right people. It's the right help I needed. Yeah. It's you know, it's just a team firing on all cylinders on all fronts to do yeah. you know the things that I need to do right. and you know to get my music in the places where it needs to get. It's yeah. just it was 
it sounded so amazing. And so I'm on the phone, my lawyer, mm. we're actually on our way, me and my homie, mm. to go to the desert to film the music video for Desperados. That was a two-man music video with a budget of about, about $114 Let's for the go. for the uh the quasars, uh, the rental and yep. the generator rental. Yep. <laughs> we packed then, it in my fucking Volvo 2005 cross country oh and we were gone God. to the desert. We're running across with quasars and a generator in our hand to get the shot because the light's almost going down, mm -hmm. falling over on dirt bikes because we never we never learned how to ride dirt bikes. That was the first <laughs> time ever. And I learned how to ride dirt bikes the day that we were filming oh for Desperado. My so, God. yeah, it was hectic, but I'm on the phone with my lawyer the whole time and he's like, yo, this deal that, like, we're talking about like yeah. this this deal doesn't happen it's to, not a to, single it's a to, proper to deal people. yeah yeah like this is a really good deal yeah and so i'm in the prime of my life dude i'm yeah, airpods in going yeah. to shoot a music video about oh, to get a record deal i'm like holy shit life is good and dude call happens thursday deal sign monday damn so you just knew yeah see because i have a bias like johnny's my guy yeah. And like, those are my favorite people. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying that I like have a, an issue with majors at all. In fact, I don't, but I, I do think I have an open bias to like, that's my favorite major. So it's cool to hear an artist from that side where I'm like, my people treated you right. Dude. And like, I, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting like, because I didn't realize how much Johnny really was so pivotal in that. And oh yeah. Oh my God. That's so he cool. Was a big part of that. Fuck. That's cool. And he's my guy. Yeah. Like, it's just, we, we've, we've been really. We've been really clicking with yeah. the way that we've been working. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Johnny for the, the Travis Barker feature that we got rocking. Yeah, yeah. Is it time we talk about what you're up to right now? Did we? Did sure. we? Because I mean, like this, I Why think not? this paints it, right? Yeah. I mean, well, I figure I get, maybe the last piece of it is you obviously come back to LA. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was in St. Louis, uh, you know, before the deal. And then, you know, I go back to LA after St. Louis and I'm just grinding tiktok yeah i'm just every single at that point it was like yeah. there were so many dance trends yeah which was perfect for me i'd take the song from the dance trend yep. i'd remix it i put my vocals on it and then it would take you know the trending sound and i'd do all that shit with that and it would just go wow so I'd, i did one of the i don't think you want to go off the deep that shit went crazy viral oh like God. every single trending sound you heard on tiktok there yeah. was a version by me wow. <laughs> you know, something else in your story that i like is like you definitely like through from day one have a confidence in your project and yourself as an artist but you're also not above shit like you weren't the artist that was too cool to figure tiktok out hell no or, like putting shit in vlogs like i've you know there's like there is that artist mindset yeah. that's like above that and yeah. I, I like that you like played the game and you fucking sold cupcakes and you did the things like you really understood what it took and put all that work in. Yeah. I just think it's kind of like, it's like death of your ego at that point. Like at the beginning of it, like you, you can't afford to have a fucking ego at the beginning. Well, but a lot and, of people and do. Really, and really ever, you yeah. really never should get to that point. It's obviously hard and you know yeah. but i think it's that confidence in right. yourself yes. oftentimes gets mistaken for an ego right and i'm sitting down with you and you exude confidence like you fucking know your music you love it you know you're in your pocket but i don't feel an ego and clearly like that. you put in that work and you're explaining that like i love that example i love yeah. that that's rare you have to be confident in yourself bro i mean they're like if you're do you shouldn't be doing this if you don't have confidence in yourself this is one of the this is one of the scariest fucking things you can do in the whole wide world you are making something from thin air bearing your soul yeah. onto your the most your, your product shit. and you're yeah. like here i really hope you guys like this yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you can't be you can't be hiding in your shell yeah. when when that time comes around man like i mean i love my music yeah i fucking love my music there yeah. i'll say it good like good. i mean i you I, I i love it so much i love making it i love the people that i've been so blessed to meet out here and make that music with like i'm just with the most talented people all the time yeah and i love working with musicians personally like you know there's there's beat makers yep and then there's musicians. Yeah. Like, I love being in a room where, all right, let's throw some guitar on it. Bet. He throw, he goes over to the guitar. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, I want a synth on this. 
pull out the set. <laughs> I'm Say like, less. that's my type of studio session. I like being involved in the process. Like, I don't want to go in to your six selected beats that you, you know, got together. After Open you up heard a folder and my, play. Yeah, a bro. Samples, no, yeah. I want to be hands on because I don't make the beats myself. Right. But I'm right there You're over the shoulder. It. Like, hold on, hold on. No, that part needs to be yeah. different. How about we bring a bass in thing here? I want to take this and I want to just, oh you know. Oh my God. But that chemistry is so important. It's like, so important. That to me, that's your modern day artist. That's your modern day superstar is the artist and then the producer. Yeah. And that it's a combo and you yeah. got to speak that same language. You, you got to have do, that man. Vibe. And like, I'm just like such a big believer in, I don't even start on the music yeah. for like an 45 to an hour after yeah. I get to a session. Yeah. Like, I just want to chop it. Yep. I want to, how you doing? Yep. How's your head? What you've been thinking about? Yep. Like, what's 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 going on? How's life? Like, I just want to chop it people up. People are catch people. A vibe. You got to, yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if it's like a little Friday, we'll you know, saucy up some white claws, mm -hmm. you know, catch a little vibe. So it's like, I think, I think, you know, people first. Yeah. Then music. That's a great mentality. Because... The music always turns out so much better when you yeah. can just, you guys are on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's another hard thing is this is now your job. This is your full-time job and it can become transactional. Making this beautiful creative thing can become, oh, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. So I love that your mindset is there where you still remember that it has to stay fun and that it's doing it with people. Like it's a really good balance <laughs> you've struck here. It's Dude, this is the most fun shit in the world. I'm streaming on Twitch right now. Oh, no uh, shit. I, thanks to Electra. Shout yeah. out. Wow. I, I go through my day. If I have a session, I go to a session. If yeah. I don't, I'm on Twitch. I'm making my TikToks on Twitch. Yeah. And then gaming with fans amazing I, I actually play video games sometimes cool. for my job that's insane <laughs> what games do you play uh i play apex okay that's like that's like my main one if i'm streaming streaming and then i popped out like fall guys because i saw everybody who was streaming that shit yeah. but like 14 year old me would be shitting himself bro right? <laughs> and it's like that's why i'm hyped to have you on the podcast is like i love telling these stories i love encouraging people because like 14 year old you if you could hear an older version of you being like no it fucking happened i believed in myself there were some hiccups i was in fucking the woods filming football but i got there like if yep. we can continue to spread that hopefully more people go do the thing yep i love that so Dude, I, okay yes to conclude the story okay so you get back to la yes it's game on you're signed you're fucking in it and that probably brings us up to this current kind of, cause you have an EP coming out. Mm -hmm. You did a song with Travis Barker, which is mm -hmm. fucking insane. Like insane. it seems like you leveled up, leveled up, leveled up, found your sound. And now you're kind of like in this new pocket where like, there's almost going to be this whole new version of miles real soon. Right? Yeah, man. It's just, just been super dope to work with work on things with a budget. Oh my god. That's been really fun. My <laughs> I, one of one of our first music videos that we did, uh I got to go to Hawaii. What the fuck? Yeah. Like shoot a <laughs> shoot a music video on location. Wow. So that was the craziest shit ever. You know, we just been we've been working together. We've been putting out these songs. It's been going well. The steps are headed in the right direction. Yeah. And you know, it's it's just it's coming together. Yeah. And the Travis Barker thing was just so sick. I mean, absolute legend. Yeah, yeah. A, a fucking legend was that like on your radar like growing up like blink 182 i was like never a huge stuff? like rock punk guy yeah uh, i like that you're honest about that mm -hmm. and the reason i'm curious is like he has transcended that genre mm -hmm. travis barker has become this producer has become this figure yep. that did incredible shit in hip-hop mm -hmm. and like everything he did with dj am and like everything right mm -hmm. so like that i'm so curious like at what point you're like oh fuck he's a legend and it's cool to hear that like you're like yeah it wasn't even so much the rock thing yeah man well i mean because if i'm being completely honest Please? it was like machine gun kelly yeah when i started yeah. like seeing okay and travis barker and then he any pop punk song yep. where the drums are absolutely fucking insane literally it's yeah. travis it's barker like, it's so i'm almost like, a meme at this so point I'm it's like, like oh okay. yeah the drums sound good it's a pop punk it's, yeah, okay it's yeah. travis barker yeah. and so then i'm like 
okay and i i'll be honest until that point yeah i didn't even know he was in blink 182 oh my god that's I awesome i was never like a, that's awesome because i didn't blink 182 like that was just wasn't it was so far from my pocket growing up right. like i just didn't listen and so like then i went back and i was like holy shit this guy oh. is like he's been yeah on the scene for a minute and just oh. One but, of the best in his fucking in his field. Think about this moment. Like you like Blink 182 was my first CD where I was like, oh, music can be different and like not the radio. And it was mm-hmm. everything. Like I was like skateboarding and like just listening to Blink and Green Day all the time. Mm-hmm. Here we are coming together on our love of music. And like this one motherfucker has bridged a gap and has brought so much music together. Like, how special is that? That's it's so fucking awesome. cool. It's so awesome. So yeah, just just to have him, you know, and wasn't even on my radar that that would be like an attainable thing. We well, were that's just probably in, our guy Johnny, right? <laughs> dude, Johnny we were thing. literally Johnny and our managers. We were all yeah. in the studio listening to the EP, and he was like, "Yo, this song, it feels like it just needs something." Yeah, and we we're like, "Yeah, maybe like some live drums." And he was like, "Yeah, like Travis Barker." And yeah. we were like, "Well, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. well yeah, yeah, I mean, for sure." He was like. I bet. <laughs> and then insane. like it just happened, man, and the song sounds so crazy. Insane. It sounds fucked. Amazing. Yeah. But that's actually cool to hear. So the the EP is actually way more than just a Travis feature. Like yeah. it's like this is just a small piece of something that you're very proud of. Where where do you find yourself in this in this current time for everything you put together there? Yeah, for this EP, it was like it's a lot of guitar. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm trying to find that that balance between not going too far in any like one genre, you know, and kind of keeping it central to my sound. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's got guitar influences, it's got synth influences going on. It's got, yeah. you know, we got songs like Miss Independent and the Internet, where, you know, that's like that's more poppy stuff too, but it's still got that guitar that like kind of brings it back. So it's definitely, I would say heavy like guitar influence. And, and there is some pop punk influences and especially in Never yeah. Have I Ever. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of taking those genres and, you know, smashing that's them sick. together into one. Bro, I also love like I uh I've said this a couple of times on the podcast, but like the whole thing of like for a minute, like all of like the warp tour scene kind of went away. Like mm-hmm. it was just like not cool anymore. Mm-hmm. And then Machine Gun Kelly does that album. Everyone's like, Did you hear pop punks coming back? And I'm like, <laughs> motherfuckers, not for you. You made that shit so stale and boring. So I love that like you came and took a crack at like your version of what that would sound like. Like and that pushes genres forward. That's sick. And that's really that song, man. That's never have I ever. I was yeah. like, you know. I'm hearing things that I like about this. <laughs> like, let me, let me try. Yeah, let me try, yeah. but let me try in my in way. In your way. And how I wanted to sound. Right. And, it, you know, it came together and it was really cool. Like, you know, by no means do I put myself like I am a pop punk artist. Like, no. I just really wanted to take a stab at something with some of the elements from that. Exactly. Yeah. Like, the same way that you wanted to take a stab at going full on pop. And that evolves and that lets you continue to build your project to find these pockets. And I just think that's cool. I wish everyone would do more of that. I think artists get too precious. They have a predisposed idea of what they should sound like yeah. and they don't fuck around and try stuff. Like, yeah. your voice is still your voice, your style is your style. Like, your fans hear that. It's fine. Try shit. Exactly. It's cool. Exactly. Yeah, we did a lot of trying yeah. shit <laughs> for a long time, man. And just like, just some shit just stuck out as sounding correct. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So that's, this is like a moment, like when this comes out and like, this is an, a whole new chapter where you get to kind of fucking put that out and yeah. continue to. It is. It's a whole new chapter too, because like, this is kind of, you know, this is the amalgamation of everything that I've been doing since the moment that I got out to yeah. LA, since I really started making music. You know, this is like, this is my little story up to, right. you know, this point. Yeah. And, you know, the, the EP will come out, The song, some of the songs, you know, they, they've been done for so long and we were just figuring out the right ways yeah. to put them out, where they need to go in the finishing touches and everything like that. Yep. And so, you know, like, I'm so excited for this EP just because it gets to, you know, encapsulate that first chunk of time yep. that yep. I've been out here. Exactly. And it, it's that. It's like you're encapsulating yeah. a chunk of time. And yeah. from there, like, I mean, you're not going to stop. Like, who knows oh, yeah. what it goes. But I, I yeah. love those special chapters. I love when you can look at that and be like, that represents this. Yep. That's cool. I'll say this. I'm 
I mean, this EP is so amazing. I love the sound on it, but I'm yeah. also excited for where the sound's going. Yeah, that's like, future. well, because I mean, fuck, like right before you started recording, we were chopping it up and you're like, dude, I got back from the studio. Like yeah. some of this stuff that you're working on, yeah. like that's, yeah, it's not like you stopped. It's not you're like no. EP's done. Like, no, like it seems like you've really just gotten started. Yeah, it really, I mean, this is, this is the first, this is my first project ever. Yeah. I mean, first official right. project that wasn't, one that I made in two weeks and put it on SoundCloud. Exactly. Like, it's like, <laughs> what an honor to have you on right now too. Like I always love like the moments because it's like we'll both be able to look back at this and be like, shit, that was just the beginning. Like yep. I love, I because I, you know, I, I never want to paint it of like all oh, Miles, world's biggest artist, but it's like I love to celebrate the, the journey and the moment that we're at. Uh, yeah. And I feel like you've really earned your spot here. And it really that. feels like the beginning. If it, it feels like it, man, you know, definitely – definitely been putting the work in but you know yeah. a lot of things have have gone my way yeah. yeah yeah it's fucking cool thank you for sharing this story too like i think absolutely i wasn't ready for all of that and I, <laughs> I really i hope that it inspires everyone out there that listens of like truly like i mean you fucking knew like you had some hurdles and you had some setbacks but like you fucking knew and here you are you set that example you made it happen that's fucking great that's everything that i want out of this thank you man yeah it's uh it's a crazy story and honestly it makes me so happy to tell it and yeah. like recount the yeah. little tiny things along the way and just oh, and you know it's funny because when i really really look back like i was supposed to do this my whole entire life yeah i just didn't know it until that moment yeah like because then i go back and I, I i think about the things about you know elementary school singing belting out one in every solo being in the musicals like being on stage having yeah. no problem being up on stage like yeah. it was just like holy shit right it was it was always supposed to exactly be this. exactly it just took me a, you know and and it took me a second to realize it but you know when the, i was probably what well, i was like 16 years old so right i'd say i i caught on to my to my path pretty damn early pretty quick in <laughs> yeah. comparison yeah for sure the, the ep comes out on the uh, 826 is that right ep comes out august 20 six yeah i'll try to time this episode drop right around then too because i think it'll be cool for listeners to find this and then go right into it that would be fantastic yeah. and then it seems like i'll link all your socials and all that but it seems like you're a fun tiktok follow i didn't follow you on tiktok so now i get to go in and then and see what you're up to we, there we have we have a good time on tiktok okay we have a good cool. time on tiktok for sure is that like where you have fun making stuff right now yeah dude I, I love making stuff for tiktok man yeah. it's just it's awesome because you know i lucked out in starting to do something that i actually do which is make music you know i think like some people will get in the pocket of doing something random for tiktok and yeah. it doesn't you know carry right. over into the, yeah, what they do yeah you make cute cat videos and that's you know, great but that's so that. it's it's cool but but my it's just so fun because it just like it you know it works my muscle every day like yeah. I'm, I'm writing a song i'm writing a remix i'm, I'm putting a verse on a on a song and yeah. doing that thing so it, it's a lot of fun and i just get to you know i don't have to think about anything i'm just like first thing comes to head put it on the paper write it sing it chop it done done like yeah. and never think about oh does this fit with me does this fit with you know does this fit with the current sound or where i'm going i just get to just have fun see i, I love that i think like social media got way too precious and mm -hmm. tiktok is like such a good reset when you do it right <sighs> TikTok, like, i don't give a fuck i'm having fun tiktok is the perfect reset tiktok is a great teacher of don't overthink shit. Yep. yep. And that's, I think, a, a dope thing to find on TikTok. Yeah. 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 And like a rad way to conclude, dude. Don't Truly. overthink shit. Don't overthink shit. <laughs> if, if you get one thing from over here, believe in yourself. Don't overthink shit. Boom. Dude, I think Boom. we did the thing. Mic drop. Yeah.